This is Real Housewives of the Kingdom, a sweet space where you'll hear from the hearts of fellow housewives in the kingdom of God, some just like you and some really different in various walks of life. We will talk about how God is walking with us through the good and the hard. I pray you'll be encouraged and entertained as we laugh and sometimes cry together. Most of all, I hope it reminds you we're in this together and you are not alone. Hey everybody, we are still in the middle of our Define Ministry series, and I am excited today to share my conversation with my cousin Jennifer. She is telling us all about her ministry called A Fresh Journey. It involves getting outdoors and moving your body in a way that meets people right where they are at. Hello everybody, welcome back to Real Housewives of the Kingdom. Today we are still in our series of Define Ministry where we are just kind of exploring some really cool ministries of other real housewives of the kingdom that are out there just being the hands and feet of Jesus in ways that uh, you may not expect. So today I am so excited to have my cousin, Jennifer Newfeld on the podcast. Welcome, Jennifer. Hey, Caroline. <laughs> I guess I feel like sometimes I call you Jen or Jennifer. I don't know. They're both I go both. I know. I know. Only my daddy gets away with Jenny. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I've never called you Jenny, but Jen, Jennifer, I go back and forth. But anyway, I'm so glad to have you here. We actually have been hanging out all morning. Uh, Jen came to Bible study with me, which was really fun. And so we've just been having a great time before heading uh, into this podcast, which has just been really, really sweet. So we are going to dive in, but first I want you to just introduce yourself. Let's start with that. All right. So my name is Jennifer Newfeld. So I've been married for going on 20 years and I have four kids. Part of our struggle is that uh, three out of our four have diagnosed mental illnesses mm -hmm. along with myself. And so that's been a huge piece of our lives is trying to figure out how to keep mm -hmm. our brains healthy. And mm -hmm. so that's um, part of my journey here. Yeah, I've been walking with Jesus since I was like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So I actually found it in the back of my Bible. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> that's so awesome. A little prayer that I wrote, I love you, Jesus. Please mm -hmm. take away my sins that I remember writing in the oh back of the car. Gosh. And so, yeah, so I found that Bible <sighs> the other day when I was trying to pass out Bibles to my <sighs> teenage girls that come over for a youth group Bible study. Oh and I was like, oh, that's my really special Bible because it has my little my little prayer to oh Jesus. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. I love yeah. that. It's so awesome because really, and I've talked about this on the podcast, but walking with Jesus, um, when you've walked with Jesus since you were little, like we have, and we come from, I mean, a legacy of people yeah. who faith has been the central part of our lives. Yeah. And so um, we have just the blessing of having, you know, all the way to great grandparents that loved the Lord and loved family and made that a priority. So that's been really cool. Doesn't mean we're it's all perfect. not crazy it's somewhere. Not crazy. <laughs> no. <It's perfect. laughs> if you heard some of our family's stories, you uh, may be afraid to attend the family reunion. <laughs> there were axes involved. Anyway. Knives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> now you're wondering with what she said about the mental illness thing. Anyway. <laughs> It's real. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that's my cousin. So Jennifer's mom and my dad are brother and sister and fortunately grew up where our parents really prioritized us actually spending time together. So Jennifer has two sisters um, that are younger than her and um, but all kind of around in our similar age group to where uh, we all played together growing up. And it's so cool because they grew up in Idaho. Uh, for the most part of my growing up, and I grew up in Southern California. So uh, it was actually just really incredible that our parents did that because our relationships uh, with each other are very sweet to this day. And I really treasure that. And I found that that's not a normal, that's not a normal thing to have what we have. So right. I really appreciate that. And there's kind of a like, we could see each other once in a year, or we could see each other 
it, it doesn't really matter. And we just all kind of pick right back up where we left off. And exactly. um, we used to have, uh, when we used to leave each other, we all used to cry except for, um, Jennifer was always this, like the little bit more sensible one. Like after we had all wailed for long enough, she'd be like, okay, let's just pull it together. Let's just like, <laughs> we have to say goodbye. We have eventually. to say goodbye eventually. Come on everybody. And she was also the oldest of us. So, um, she was kind of the, um, <laughs> matriarch comes cousin of that the group. Model, the model <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> you know, but, um, but we would like keep tissues oh. from crying and yes, anyway, were treasures. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I just, I love that. All right. Well, as I said, we are in our series, Define Ministry. And the reason I have my cousin on is because she is serving God in a really unique way within her community. And uh, I am going to let her dive in and tell us about it. Yeah. So um, right around 2020, January of 2020, the Lord told me that I was done in a season mm -hmm. of really doing a lot of recovery work and my own healing really, he told me, I'm closing the book. You have everything you need. Now just walk it out and live it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I did not expect a pandemic to be a part of that journey. <laughs> I don't think anyone expected a pandemic to be part so of any journey. <laughs> I had a very clear sense of direction as I walked into January of 2020 saying, you know, like God has something he's wanting me to do. And so I had been, like I said, doing my own healing work and, um, a huge part of that has kind of really morphed into what I call my self-care essentials. And that means every day I get to make a choice. I need to care for my physical body, my emotional body, and my spiritual body. Because they're all who I am and they make me up. And yep. if I don't care for myself, nobody else is doing that for me. <laughs> That's part of a grown-up's job, <laughs> right? Is to, to figure out how to take care of yourself. And... So that's really how I've been able to do, walk through some of the really hard things that I've been able to walk through just by practicing one thing a day mm. and making a choice. And so um, that's really where I wanted to, to be able to help give direction mm -hmm. with, without telling someone this is how you have to do it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's, there's a direction that we're going in. We're going in the direction of healing and walking out your journey, however messy it is. And mm -hmm. you get to make choices. Mm -hmm. And that was huge for me because when I was at my most broken, I felt like there was no choices. All mm -hmm. my choices had been taken. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really the only choice I had left was to end my life. And that was mm -hmm. a very dark, dark place. And that was the day I decided I needed help. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was really willing to receive a different level of understanding of what it meant to walk with the Lord and people. That's awesome you to share that because I think I'm sure plenty of people listening have felt that way and in some time or another in their life um, have felt at least like they were out of options or, um, you know, even if they haven't gone to the point where they felt like they didn't want their lives to be over. I mean, you can still go into yep. really dark places and I think the enemy wants to keep us there. And one of the reasons for this podcast as well is that I just want people to not feel alone. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that you shared that because I think if people can hear this, I think a lot of moms go through that because yep. you give so much to your kids yep. and then, you know, they're babies and they need to be fed and clothed and cared for. Right. And, when I actually know. didn't know I had a panic disorder uh, yeah. and I would have panic attacks <laughs> about having a baby because they are depending on me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a lot that's of terrifying. It was. And yeah. I didn't know what a panic disorder was, but yeah. I had one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure anyone listening um, who's been a parent, even if you haven't been a parent, yeah. I mean, you may have found yourself in the same spot. And so um, I'm just, I'm glad that you're sharing this because it is important that we pay attention to all three of those things. Yeah. I want to yeah. also bring up a good point too, that remember what we said that we came from families who love God. Yeah. We have known God's truth. We have known what is in God's word since we were young. So don't feel discouraged if something blindsides you and you need help. Yeah. You should never feel like you can't ask for help. 
because the place where God wants us actually is completely helpless <laughs> and depending on him. And it's hard because sometimes I think we confuse walking with God as being a good Christian and having our stuff together. Right. And that is not the case. The whole point, Jesus came for the sick, not for the well. So take heart if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. that even if you are someone who has walked with God your whole life, or you are very involved in a church or you know, if there is something in your life that is feeling a little too big and overwhelming, God put people around us for a reason. And so that kind of will continue in with this. So you were saying that, so God basically gave you the insight to focus on a mind, body, and spirit. Right. So that was part of my entire journey from Roughly, uh, my world really started falling apart probably around 2008. By 2013, we were making major moves in our lives, trying mm -hmm. to find like emotionally safe places because our mm -hmm. church wasn't safe. Mm. Our community wasn't safe. Um, the extended families weren't safe. There was no, we didn't have that mm -hmm. safe feeling. And so we literally moved communities and um, I was able to go to some support groups mm -hmm. and do some of my own healing work. So that was a large portion of my life, mm -hmm. almost to the point where I really thought that I was never going to be better, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so when he told me that I had everything I needed <laughs> and the door, was, the, the book was closing and I was like, oh no, oh no what am I going to do? Because we all struggle with this identity of who we are and all that stuff. And so, you know, my identity was almost wrapped up in being a recovering person. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I've heard that that happens with people who battle cancer and kind of get out of it. They get into this like, moment of like they've been in the battle and there's all these people yeah. around them in the battle and I when you were saying yeah. that I what I pictured was when I was in the hospital for my uh after my cyst burst and yeah. that my whole emergency thing I remember being in the hospital for that week I they um you know would give me like medicine when I needed it and put it directly into an IV. So it happened pretty quickly that my pain was relieved yeah. and there was people to help me go to the bathroom and all these things. And then once I stepped foot outside of that hospital, they're like, okay, now it's time Your to job. heal. Yeah. Now it's actually time to heal. Right. The hospital was the start of the healing, yeah. but stepping out felt a little scary. I mean, that's kind of was yeah. the visual that I got when you were saying that God said, mm -hmm. you have everything you need. Okay. Go. <laughs> You're like, wait. Or I had all my people and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that the pandemic was coming mm -hmm. and that I wasn't going to be with those people anyways. Mm -hmm. That was going to be gone. Yeah. And and so that was actually one of my pandemic traumas, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I actually have, you know, done a whole lot of work into <laughs> that. Um, but I want to get on to hiking. And so part of my recovery has also been a huge piece of finding community in hiking in this idea that I needed to take care of my physical self. Mm -hmm. I tried running. Mm -hmm. It was okay. And I had a good friend that I ran with for a long time. And then something happened and she wasn't able to meet with me. <laughs> and so then I kind of got mad at God because we were had such a good thing going and <laughs> I was having a good time. And so then I was like, well, CrossFit is a little bit too hard for me. And especially the emotional state I was in, you know, challenging yourself yeah. that hard was not good for me. And so I was like, oh, I just don't even know what to do anymore. I had a thought. Why don't, why don't I see if there's any hiking groups out here? So if you're listening to this and you don't know, Bakersfield is hot, <laughs> like next to the sun. Yeah. <laughs> so she, so Jennifer lives about an hour and a half east of here, of where I live in the central coast. And yes, Bakersfield is incredibly hot. <laughs> and so finding things all throughout our, our marriage has been hard because I grew up being, doing so much outdoor mm -hmm. stuff. Obviously I lived in Idaho, right? It's beautiful mm -hmm. and yes. there's four seasons and all these things. And so recognizing that something that I loved as a kid might be helpful mm -hmm. now. And so I kind of found these hiking groups and I got plugged in. And shortly after that, I got connected probably it was even before that, with Revelation Wellness. Mm -hmm. And so they host a rim-to-rim -rim hike oh, across wow. the Grand Canyon in Holy one cow. day. Whoa. And I did not know why I kept wanting to do this. <laughs> I don't I've know never, why you would want to. <laughs> I've never wanted to run a marathon. And I was yeah. like, this is basically a marathon, but hiking. 
okay, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with my brain? But I knew, it, and God was drawing me mm -hmm. into this canyon. So I have so many metaphors <laughs> about how hiking is like life. Mm -hmm. And it was really just a huge piece of the, you know, there's so much healing that comes just from being in mm -hmm. nature, getting out and doing those things. And so as 2020 showed up, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start a hiking group. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start a hiking group for people who are beginners. You know, you don't have to be an Olympic athlete. I am obviously not an Olympic athlete. I crossed the Grand Canyon as a normal mom who trained next to her car on her work breaks and in her closet. Literally. I tell people, you can do this with what you've got. You don't have to have a gym membership. You don't have to have a personal trainer. We're not going to cross the Grand Canyon either because I've done that. And it's, I'm, I'm done. You're free to go and do it. But I'm done. <laughs> so what I've done is just kind of create a space. I just started putting it up. Hey, I'm taking a walk. I'm a mom who, you know, struggles with her mental health and I need to get out of the house because my four walls can make me crazy sometimes mm -hmm. and I need to be able to come back in and be the person I want to be. Mm. And so I've got to get out and get my feet in the dirt, get out and see some things, talk to some people and, you know, get refocused mm -hmm. in life. It's really created a new direction. So when you first started, so I know now you have social media groups that talk about it, but in the beginning, is that kind of how you reached people or how did you initially... Yeah, so I think initially I just threw it out on Facebook and said, hey, come take a walk with me. And then I found a couple of local groups that were mm -hmm. doing it. Um, the Meetup app, I know mm -hmm. it's kind of can be sketchy, but... <laughs> no, but I heard, I mean, my sisters yeah. used it for stuff. Yeah, it's... so it's great to connect people that have similar interests with you. Mm -hmm. And so in the hiking community, there's a lot of people who are really gung-ho. Like mm -hmm. they love to do this stuff and they're good at it, right? Mm -hmm. But there's lots of people who want to go, but they're mm -hmm. afraid. They're afraid to do it alone. They're afraid of the bugs. They're afraid of the snakes. They, you know, people yeah. ask me if I are see they gonna bears. Are they going to get lost? Right. Are they going to get lost? Are they going to see bears? You know, like what do they do? And right. so, you know, obviously growing up in Idaho, I've been around nature. I'm not afraid of it. And I thought, well, God, you gave me that gift. Yeah. You know, what a blessing to have basically spent half of my childhood out in the yeah. wild. Well, and it's funny because, you know, we did a little bit of um, camping, but I would have to say there was a lot of like first type of situations that we, when we were in Idaho. Always that, happened with yeah, us. Yeah, always yeah. happened with you guys because, you know, we just didn't do, you know, we right. just didn't do the outdoors thing that much, you know. Right. So when I moved into town here in the Central Coast, I knew my cousin lived close by and she invited me to a hike. Yeah. And I was terrified. I was <laughs> like, can I do this? I called my sister. I was like, Jen wants me to go on a hike. I don't know if I can do it. And I was even uh, Marco Poling with uh, Jen's sister, Steph. And I told her, she goes, oh, you'll be able to do it. You'll be fine. <laughs> and I was like, I'm nervous. And I told Jen I was nervous. That is exactly who she wants to feel welcome in yeah. the hike. Anyone who wants to come right. is welcome. Now, how did you come up with uh, the name? So during the week, I will walk and talk with God a lot out just um, in our streets and uh, orchards and stuff. And so it just as we were walking and talking, you know, I would give voice memos to myself and, you know, I'd be like, well, this is important and this is important. Mm -hmm. And I want this to be part of this ministry. And I've been a nurse for 20 years. So mm -hmm. is it about, you know, bandaging people up? What is it about <laughs> God? So I kind of just settled on. The fact that I want to be able to give freedom, rest, and encouragement mm. for people on their soul and healing journey. So mm. fresh journey is kind of just, I just made a decision finally mm -hmm. and landed with it. And I was like, you know what? That's good. It's a good metaphor. There's lots of things to go into depth that give mm -hmm. it more meaning. And today at our Bible study, we were talking about parables. And so... <laughs> It's great. It's the hiking gives me kind of a parable mm -hmm. and I can talk to people about how life and hiking connect. In the end, I know that God's at work because I'm showing up and mm -hmm. I'm his agent and I'm his ambassador. Mm -hmm. And so people don't always know yeah. that God's at work. They mm -hmm. Sometimes they give credit to hiking mm -hmm. and me and Jesus have a secret conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she thinks it's hiking. That's so <laughs> precious. I know it's you. <laughs> well, and it's a journey, you know, yeah. just like the the name of your group and of the ministry that you're doing. And I think it's important to talk about, and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to have Jen on, and one of the reasons I'm doing this series is that 
Jesus in his ministry, in certain aspects, he was somewhat traditional. You could yeah. find him in the synagogue talking, you know, uh, talking about the word, talking about God and all these things. You could find him in traditional Jewish culture celebrations. You could find him traditionally where you might expect yeah. to see a rabbi. But you also found Jesus at the well where he knew he might run into a woman who was actually trying to go there in the middle of the day because she was trying to avoid the people of her town because she felt like an outcast. Yeah. And so Jesus often went to places where he went over across the lake to the Gentiles. He healed people in those places. He met their needs in those places. And meet, meeting their needs you know, sometimes didn't mean that they even fully understood the no. kingdom of God in that yeah. moment, right. but he was literally going where somebody needed something and filling that need. Mm -hmm. And that was showing us what the kingdom of God is all about. And so that is why I wanted to do this defined ministry, because I feel like serving in the church is a beautiful thing and it is needed and the body needs people serving and we need to encourage each other. We're meant to be in community with other believers, but God also calls us to respond to his heart and to want to love on other people. Uh, Jen's ministry is just, I've been watching her um, even before I moved up here to the central coast, I've been watching it on social media and watching her pictures and her hikes and the things that she does. And it's just so sweet because uh, I just, it reminds me of how Jesus just kind of met people right where they were at, right at their uh, hike level, mm -hmm. uh, right at the place where they might need community. And I think it's a really sweet thing to see so many different people in one place that are kind of seen from very different walks of life. Like when I did the hike with you guys, yeah. it was so cool to see the different people and how everybody just opened up. We hiked and then we all went to lunch after and it was just sweet to hear people just have a space to open up and feel like they belong somewhere. And uh, that, so I feel like not only is it hitting what you said, the body, but I feel like it's also hitting like the mind and the spirit right. all in one. Right. Yeah. So I think that hiking gives us a, a purpose mm -hmm. and a goal to, to aim to so mm -hmm. that we have a reason to care for our physical bodies because a lot of us let's just be honest <laughs> right a it's fit and beautiful body only yeah. serves you for so long yes. but to be able to think about i want to be healthy i want to be able to take on some of these challenges mm -hmm. or you know to make a goal i literally a gal that started hiking with me during the pandemic one of the first people brave people to show up <laughs> to hike with someone who says you know straight up hey yeah. i struggles with depression and i need to go take a walk, you want to go walk with me? <laughs> i mean who does that right <laughs> But she was walking her own recovery journey and she was, you know, walking some of her own things. And people ask me a lot of times, they're like, well, what if you outgrow us? What if you want to go do stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've already done all the big things. You are free to go and do what you want. This gal, she's older than me by like 10 years. Mm -hmm. She hiked Mount Whitney. Oh my gosh. On Saturday. <laughs> yeah. That's so, incredible. Yeah. I mean, over the pandemic, she lost 80 pounds. You know, she had a reason to get up and get going and hit the trails. She had nothing else to do. Her hair mm -hmm. salon was <laughs> closed. And so, so hiking gives you a purpose and a, and a, and a reason to, to desire to even care about your physical body. And then we get to talk about like the trail's always going to have a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Something's not going to go the way you planned or whatever. But all of a sudden your mind starts playing games on you. You see how far ahead it is, or, you know, just all kinds of things happen that the challenges always face us. And so we've got to be able to pull together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, it'll be like, we get to experience with somebody what their mind is doing. And I just tell them, let's, let's put, put it out loud, say it out loud. Mm -hmm. And usually once you say something out loud, it doesn't <laughs> make as much sense yeah. as it did in your head, but we're all guilty of it. We mm -hmm. all play those games. And so it just, loses its power over yeah. your mind. And, yeah. but even to like say it to somebody else, because then you're like, wait, I wouldn't say that to you. Why am I saying that to myself? Mm -hmm. You know, and just, just putting some of that stuff out there and having the community mm -hmm. to, to validate you and say, Hey, you're not crazy. I've had that same thought too, but here we're all together. You know, we'll, we'll go slow. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We can go up this hill slow. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe you just need to stop and eat something. Did you eat before you came? Mm -hmm. you maybe know, you like, need to drink a water. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, but to be able to engage that emotion that's happening at this moment, that's usually panic. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And so it's an invitation to really just honestly walk with people where they're at and for them to experience people and healing in a way that they probably haven't before, because a lot of times we're wounded in relationships Mm -hmm. and God wants to heal us Mm -hmm. in relationships. And so it just gives an opportunity to make space for Mm -hmm. some of those things to just get, just get a little exposure. Mm -hmm. And then I say, hiking and life, they just go together. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. That's awesome. Hey Hey guys, guys, it's Kevin and Caroline Rogers. Rogers. As you probably know by now, we love our marriage and are so passionate about giving others the tools they need to truly have a joyful marriage. It breaks our hearts to know the divorce rate, whether you are a Christian or not, is 50%. Yikes. We also know that nobody gets married and hopes to have a divorce. Exactly. This is why we feel God has given us the motivation to equip as many couples as possible before walking down the aisle. On our 20th wedding anniversary, we launched an online premarital course. We share our own experiences as well as what God's Word says about marriage. In it, we go over five cornerstones of a healthy God-honoring marriage and give you tangible tips on how to walk in it. You'll have over five hours of video teaching from us along with downloadable resources to take into your marriage. We have always loved our marriage and want you to love yours too. If you're getting married and would love to have some great tools to take into marriage, join us today for the course. Hey, even if you know anyone who is getting married, be sure to share this info with them. Link to the course is in the show notes or on our website, MarriedRogersNeighborhood.com. While you're busy planning your wedding, don't forget to plan your marriage. Join Join us us and and learn learn how how to thrive thrive and and not just survive. survive. So obviously this is her ministry, but it is not advertised as come hike and let's talk about Jesus. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, uh, but she is definitely being the hands and feet of Jesus. What does it look like? Uh, do you have any like stories to share where God's allowed you to share or where, uh, you've seen him kind of move, um, even for you and use Mm -hmm. what you're doing? Yeah. So I know that God reveals himself. And he is always with us. And so his his goal is mm-hmm. that we see him. And so he set his creation up mm-hmm. so that everyone can see it. Mm-hmm. And so many times I will see God show up and somebody starts pointing out, hey, did you see that heart rock? Did you see that heart in the tree? Mm-hmm. Right? The, the creation is speaking and calling mm-hmm. to them. The Lord is using that to draw their attention they'll see something beautiful or a butterfly just keeps chasing them on this path. And it's so fun. And you get to enjoy that like childlike wonder of there being, you know, this connection to the world and the Mm -hmm. world that God made and you're a part of it. And you might not even really recognize it yet, but I think there's definitely something spiritual that happens when we're in nature. Mm -hmm. And, um, so one of my fun stories, and it makes me laugh because I love to tell this one in church <laughs> and <laughs> people look at me because it's not like your typical, like, oh yeah, she became a Christian and everything's uh-huh. wonderful story. So I hiked with a gal and like within the first couple of weeks, she was so excited. What she first started talking about was how much she would party over the weekends. Mm-hmm. So that was her normal life, right? And she was going to tell us about her normal life. and I just mm-hmm. roll with it, you know, and it's kind of fun. I've got some family with some pretty severe alcoholic tendencies, <laughs> and so I can roll with it. <laughs> you can have some love and some grace in that space. <laughs> and so she was just telling me, you know, she's like, you know what? Do you know what I did this weekend? And I was like, no, you've got to tell me. She mm-hmm. goes, I drank water in between my shots this week. Huh. I was like, good for you. <laughs> how, how did what you- What a great to, step. <laughs> how, did, yeah, how did you come to that? And she's like, well, I just knew. If I didn't drink water in before, I wasn't going to be able to hike very good. Huh. And that's cool. And I was like, that's really cool. I'm so, <laughs> that's so cool. I was like, so how do you think you, you know, you've come to this thing? And like over the weeks, she would just constantly say like, yeah, my, my coworkers are telling me that, you know, hiking is making a real difference. I'm not as much of a jerk as I used to be. <laughs> oh my gosh. How and cool. I just had this, me and Jesus just had this good old chuckle mm. because I said, she thinks hiking. <laughs> she, she thinks, thinks that hiking. hiking is changing her. And I said, I know it's you because many of the people who show up, they walk with Jesus too. Mm-hmm. And they're somewhat similar to me or are walking their own recovery and still mm-hmm. doing that. 
And I know they love people and they love people hard. Mm. And so God, it, he really shows up both in nature and in character mm. as we're on the trail. And there's just this wonderful, beautiful community that's evolved and mm. emerged out of a simple step. Mm. And so I, I call fresh journey, you know, every journey starts with a step. And mm. that was just it. I just put it out there on Facebook yeah. and God did something cool. That's and so, awesome. so now I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to move forward and maybe even take some bigger adventures. I don't yeah. know. What do you, so what do you see in the like visions for growth that you would like to see grow with Fresh Journey? I still have an 11, 12 year old, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> at home. So probably uh, for about the next five years or so, it's going to be a remaining right. rather small but I'd love to be able to start maybe like a retreat kind of a thing mm -hmm. where oh, cool. where we could maybe focus a little bit more intensely on some of these recovery principles and mm -hmm. maybe inviting some of those who are who are ready mm -hmm. right they want to know more about God or they want to know more about a specific relationship problem that they're having even though in our minds we know that and even as Christians I think sometimes we forget how much our bodies need something how much our minds need something i mean to heal i think as christians we have jesus and we have his word and we have these things but he did create us uh with all of those three things really uh tied all together and right. they all work together i mean gosh this um the proverbs the psalms have multiple places where it talks about how pleasant words are like health to the bones. Right. And so when you think it's when all you over when that, you start to look for it. Yeah. yeah. And when you start seeing those things, you think a pleasant word is health to the bones. And I mean, that's, that's incredible. And yeah. so when you think about literally what we're hearing, what we're seeing, what we're feeling yeah. really does directly relate to how our bodies are working. And when our bodies are able to be healthy too. So, and then it's cool to see how God's brought alongside of you other people who are also believers mm -hmm. who are getting an opportunity to reach out to community. And I think what's cool for me too to see is as Christians who have maybe been used to serving in a church and not really kind of knowing how to step outside of that other than maybe your workplace or if you go to school or whatever, mm -hmm. to create a community and a safe place for people to be and to be obedient when God calls you to do something, if he puts something on your heart, even using a pain that you had, yeah. and that's where he makes all things beautiful in his time. Right. He used something painful that you went through yeah. to now turn around and help other people find the same healing. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely a really cool thing. And I think a retreat would be really awesome. Right. Well, I'd, I'd even love to be able to do like, where we learn for maybe six weeks or something before we go and we have that community kind of established and we get to go celebrate mm -hmm. by being together on the trail and going to do, you know, mm -hmm. say a destination hike like in Zion or something mm -hmm. fun like that, you know, yeah. some places that I've never even gotten to go and it would be great fun to and to take off a bite-sized chunk, right? We're not going to go rim to yeah. rim. We're going to go and just spend the day seeing something beautiful mm -hmm. that's at our pace and being able to, you know, slow down and sit along the creek and just chill well, with God, you know, it's and I cool. think too, you know, like you were saying, you were a mom who needed to get out of the, you know, yeah, the four walls four of your walls. house. Um, and I think there's a lot of moms who are listening who would resonate with yeah. that. And so it's really sweet as well to have a space w where that works, because I would think as a mom, sometimes you see someone who maybe they don't have kids or maybe their kids are grown and they're doing an activity or a thing and you think, well, that's great that you can do yoga right. class at five. I can't because right. I'm making dinner for my family, you know? Yeah. So the, I think it's really cool too that God used your season of life that you were in mm -hmm. to meet people in their season of life. Yeah. And I was yeah. thinking about too, what you were saying about nature and how much God is in nature. It's funny because like, for me, the ocean and the beach has always been a really like a place where I see God. I, uh, when I'm standing at the shore, to me, the waves, the mighty, mighty waves gives me so much peace because they are so strong. They could literally swallow up the earth that I'm standing on. One little move of the moon. I mean, they could just completely 
overtake the the land that I stand on and everything I hold dear. And yet God sets these boundaries. And I watch this mighty ocean just continually roll back into the sea, these waves. And that is such a reminder to me Mm. of God's might and that he is watching me. And so for me, I've definitely found that in in nature as well. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about when you were saying that too, I was thinking about in when Jesus is riding through the city on the donkey and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in highest. And they basically, he says, if they didn't cry out, the rocks would cry out. Mm -hmm. I always think about that. And when you were saying the heart, the heart rocks, that was what was in my head. I was like, oh my gosh, the rocks would cry out. And they and I believe they a lot. They yeah. lit and I believe that they would actually speak too. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, but I just think that that was such a cool uh, visual when you said that I was thinking yeah. that even the rocks would cry out. Mm-hmm. And so it's really cool too that you are meeting people right where they're at because I feel like that's a good encouragement for anyone listening. So if you're listening and you have even any life circumstance that may even be hard for you, I mean, listen to what Jennifer said about where she was at in life and this came out of something where she was seeking how to be healthy and healed and whole and God walked her through it. And out of that, she, it was an outpouring to reach other people to do the same. And I feel like that is just such an example of God's love overflowing in your heart to want to overflow to others. And I love it. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So we can be praying for you for hopefully maybe to do some sort of conference or getaway and to expand, but we'll also definitely be praying for just your, just everything with your group. I have really loved this conversation. I am so excited that you shared your heart with us on your ministry and just kind of the ins and outs. And I just really hope that everybody listening will just take this and just be motivated to move wherever God is calling you to move. If God is showing you something, if there's a need in your own life, maybe God's pointing that to you so that you can show somebody else that that's a need in their life too and be the hands and feet of Jesus. All right. Well, we are going to move into the rapid fire questions. What is your favorite life verse or scripture and why? So my life verse is Galatians 2.20. And I picked that. <laughs> on my somewhere around 18 when I got baptized. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been kind of cool over the last couple of years to kind of re-dive into Mm -hmm. that even. And I backed up to to 19 because kind of when my life started falling apart, Mm -hmm. you know, I really wanted to perfect it and fix it. Mm -hmm. And so verse 19 really speaks as Enneagram as Enneagram ones do. Yes. So (laughs) I had to have what I call my grace awakening. And this verse became part of my life verse now too. Mm. So it's Galatians 2, 19 and 20. For when I tried to keep the law, I realized I could never earn God's approval. So I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So I live my life in this earthly body by trusting in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm love that i was like chuckling at the beginning of that verse <laughs> like could there be another verse that speaks more directly yeah <laughs> that's incredible right that is awesome and it's true it's like we were actually having this conversation earlier about works and the law and trying to trying to be what god wants us to be um, and it's such a delicate balance yeah. um because definitely faith without works is dead but it's not about works. And so it's sweet when God reminds us that we are weak and we literally cannot do it <laughs> without him. <laughs> Humbling, but right. wonderful. <laughs> right. I love that. Okay. Uh, where is your favorite vacation spot? I got to go to Kauai. Did you see mm-hmm. my pictures? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was our 20th wedding anniversary celebration. I think we were off just a little bit because of the whole pandemic thing, y'all. <laughs> but um that was probably the most fun I've mm. ever had in my life and yeah having a marriage that's back on track and all those things is it was a wonderful celebration mm. praise god that's awesome i love Kauai. we've gone there a couple of times and um it's just uh it's it's so crazy how small it is yeah because 
But so when we were there, we had this taxi driver from the airport and he was from that island and he had never been off that island. Wow. And he was 50. <gasps> wow. And uh, if you don't know, for the listeners, Kauai is, half of the island is rainforest and the other half, there is a road that goes on the other half of the island, but it's literally, it's basically one road. It's like a little country road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. And um, it's beautiful. It's magnificent, but pretty wild that this guy had never been off of Hawaii at 50 years old. Right. That yeah. blew my mind. Yeah. I just couldn't even believe it. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? So I would want to fly. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know why. When I was a little kid, I always had nightmares that were my feet were like glued to the floor. <laughs> and like I couldn't run. Like I was trapped. Like I was stuck. And so somehow in my dreams, I got the superpower to just up and fly. <laughs> so I couldn't run, but I could fly. <laughs> well, maybe you really have this. No. <laughs> I, I, I really think I thought I did for a while. Like I could imagine it in my head that I was up and flying out of wherever we were. <laughs> I don't think I have that. I think it's just <laughs> I love it. Flying would be awesome. Yeah. Flying would be awesome. I always thought invisibility. I So um, I say that I want to be like the invisibility cloak, like be able yes, to like yes. cloak myself. And people are like, wow, that's creepy. Why? Do you right, want to listen to right. people's conversations? I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Yeah, right. I don't know. I just sometimes think it would be nice to be able to just like not be some, like to be somewhere and to be able to just quick. I think that's your nine. Get out. <laughs> yeah, my Enneagram nine, my um, my peacemaker. It yeah, this situation. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm all done here. Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that's awesome. Oh. This has been such a sweet conversation, and I am just so encouraged to see God working in your life and in your ministry, and I'm just excited to see what he's going to do. Can you just tell the listeners where they can find and follow you? Yes. So I am on Facebook for the most part. I, I have a Instagram page, but it's just a bookmarker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. it says, Hey, go to Facebook and you'll find me over there. <laughs> All right. So fresh journey six is, um, what you would type in to get specifically to me. Otherwise I'm pretty sure I'll pop up. <laughs> All right. Well, I will just link it in the show notes so that people can click journey. on it. And then, um, my webpage is freshjourney.online. Okay. And so I'm trying to get that all up and running. And awesome. so hopefully if anybody wants to do hiking for health, you can, it doesn't have to be in person. You can do it virtually and I'll cool. coach you through it. And um, you too can become a, a hiker for health. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll be able to go wherever you are and we'll have a hike together. That's That sounds awesome. Yeah. And it, so if you are... If you are in the Bakersfield area and you would like to join them, that's how you can reach out to her. Um, or like she said, go on and do a virtual hike or say, come out and do hikes with us in this yeah. place. And uh, who knows? Create, maybe your, all... create your own fresh journey community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so glad that you're actually live with me. I don't know that I said that when we were talking already earlier, but she's actually live sitting here right next to me. I think I said we were at Bible study, but often I do a Zoom interview just right. because it's convenient. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, now just we've kind of moved and lived all over lately in the last couple of years. That is how I've been able to do it. But I have done some in-person interviews and I really yeah. love in-person interviews because I like to see see faces and be yep. right next to somebody. So especially my cousin. So it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, for being on the show and uh bye everybody. Bye bye. See you on the trail. Okay friends, that's it for today. I'm truly grateful you joined us. If you think others would be encouraged by this episode, you can easily share it by taking a screenshot and adding it to your stories or feed. You can also text it to a friend. New episodes are available every Friday. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch them all. You can find and interact with me on Facebook and Instagram at Married Rogers Neighborhood, as well as my website, which I linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed the show today, I would so appreciate if you could take a second to rate and give a five-star review. It helps more people find it, which makes a huge difference for me and the podcast. Just remember, we are in this together. God loves you, and you are not alone. See you next time.